Hi, in this video we're going to talk about subgroups. And a subgroup is exactly how it sounds. It's a group within a group. So if we have a group G, then we say H is a subgroup of G if it meets these three requirements. So first, H must be a subset of G. H also must be closed under the binary operation of G. And H itself must be a group with the binary operation of G. So let's look at an example. We know that the set of complex numbers with addition is a group. Let's see if we can find any subgroups of this. So first, in order to be a subgroup, we need it to be a subset. So we know that the real numbers is a subset of the complex numbers. We also know that the set of real numbers are closed under addition. And we know that the set of real numbers with addition is a group. So this group satisfies all three requirements and we'll say that the set of real numbers is a subgroup, say the set of real numbers with addition is a subgroup of the complex numbers. And that's what this means here. It means that it's a subgroup. Similarly, we know that the set of rationals with addition, this is also a subgroup of the real numbers. And you can see since it's a subgroup of the real numbers, it also must be a subgroup of the complex numbers. And finally, of course, we know that the set of integers is a subgroup of the rationals. And we could continue with this and actually find an infinite number of subgroups for the complex numbers. For example, the subgroup of the even integers, written like this, where we have 2 times the integers with addition. This is a subgroup of the integers. So, of course, it's a subgroup of the complex numbers. We could have also written a 3 here or a 4 here, and these would all be subgroups of the original integers. Now one thing we couldn't have said is that the group with the rationals without the zero element with multiplication is a subgroup of C. This is not true. This is not a subgroup of the complex numbers with addition. And that's because you can see here this operation is different than the original operation. So even though we know that the rational numbers without the zero element is a subset of the complex numbers, and we also know that this together is a group, this cannot be a subgroup of this. So when you're dealing with these, you have to make sure that the subgroup has the same operation as the original group. Otherwise, it can't be a subgroup. Now let's look at an example. Let's take the integers modulo 4 with addition modulo 4 and see if we can find subgroups for this group. First, in order to be a subgroup, we know it must be a subset of the integers modulo 4. So let's find all the subsets of this set. These are all the subsets containing one element. These are the ones containing only two elements, containing only three elements, and then finally the subset containing the entire set, which is all four elements. Now we want to see if any of these subsets can be a group with the operation addition modulo 4. So first, since we know it must be a group, it has to contain the identity element, which is 0. So anything that doesn't contain the zero element can't be one of our subgroups. So let's just cross out everything that doesn't have a zero element. And this will narrow down our options a little bit. Now another thing we need to look out for is that it must be closed under addition modulo 4. And notice if the set contains 1, in order for it to be a subgroup, it would have to contain every element. Because, for example, 1 plus 1 is 2, but if 2 is not in the set, then it's not closed under addition modulo 4. So since 1 is in the set, but 2 and 3 aren't, we can say this can't be a subgroup. Same thing here. We have a 1 and a 2, but 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 is not in the set, so it's not closed. So that can't be a group. So anything with 1 that doesn't have every element can't be a group. Now we've narrowed it down quite a bit, so let's just go through each of these and see if they're groups. First, we have this set containing only the 0 element. And this is closed under addition modulo 4. And it is, in fact, a group with addition modulo 4. So this is the smallest subgroup. And we call this the trivial group. Now let's move on to this one. So this one is closed under addition modulo 4. Because 2 plus 2 is 4, which is 0 modulo 4. And 0 is in our set. Also, this set with addition modulo 4 is a group. It has the identity element. And each of these elements has an inverse. They are both their own inverses. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 2 is 0. Also, the associative property for addition modulo 4 still holds, so this tells us that this is a group. Now let's look at this one. We see that the 3 is in our set, 
But 3 plus 3 is 2 modulo 4, and 2 is not in our set. It's not closed under the binary operation, so that cannot be a group. And same idea here. 2 plus 3 is 5, which is 1 modulo 4, but 1 is not showing up in this set. So this cannot be a group. And then finally, this is just our original group. So this is, of course, a subgroup. And we call this one the improper group. So every group has at least two subgroups, the trivial group and the improper group. The trivial group is the group that contains only the identity element, and the improper group is the group itself. This group also had one proper, non-trivial subgroup, which is the group that contains this set with addition modulo 4. And sometimes it's helpful to write a diagram to show the chain of subgroups. So to make this diagram, we would have the integers modulo 4 on top, which is our original group. Then this has a subgroup, which is the group containing this set with addition modulo 4. And now this group here actually has this subgroup, which is the trivial group. So we can say that this one is a subgroup to this group, and this one is a subgroup to this group. And that tells us that this bottom one is a subgroup, of course, to this top one. So these subgroup diagrams really help us to show the chain of subgroups from our original group. Let's look at another example. In this example, we'll look at the set of integers modulo 2 crossed with itself with addition, where this addition operation is defined like this, where we have the element a comma b plus the element c comma d equaling the element a plus c comma b plus d. And this group is also known as the Klein 4 group. So let's see if we can find any subgroups to this group. And before we do that, let's remember what this set of the integers modulo 2 crossed with itself is actually equal to. So this is the set containing these four elements. And we know that this one here is the identity element of our group. Now automatically we know that this group has two subgroups. We know that the group containing only the identity element with addition is a subgroup. It's the trivial group. And we also know the group itself is a subgroup called the improper group. Now let's see if we can find any non-trivial proper subgroups. Okay, so first things first, it needs to be a subset. The only subset containing one element that can be a subgroup is this one here. Because if it had just only one of these elements, it wouldn't have the identity element, so it couldn't be a group. Next, let's see if we can find a subgroup that contains the set of two elements. So we know that one of those elements has to be the identity element. Now let's try it with this element and see if that gives us a subgroup. So it's definitely a subset. It's also closed under the binary operation of this addition. Because if we have this 0, 1 added with itself, that would just give us the 0, 0. So it is closed under this operation. And this with addition is also a group. Each of these elements are its own inverse, it has the identity element, and of course the addition operation is always associative. So this one is a subgroup. Now let's try and see if we have the identity element with the other element being 1, 0. Again, this is a subset, of course. And again, it's closed under the binary operation because this added with itself would give us 0, 0. Each one of these are again its own inverse and the addition operation is associative so we get that this is itself a subgroup. And then finally, let's look at the subset containing the identity element and the element 1, 1. This added with itself gives us 0, 0, so it's closed. And each of these are its own inverses. So again, we have found another subgroup. And these are the only subgroups that we can find containing two elements. Now let's see if we can find a subgroup containing three elements. We know that one of the elements must be the identity element. So we'll have this element here. Now let's say we wanted to include these two elements. If we included these two elements though and added them with each other, we would get the element 1, 1. So if we had these two elements, we would need this element here in order to ensure that it's closed under the binary operation. So the set containing these three elements alone cannot be a subgroup. Now what if we wanted to include this element and this element? Again, if we added these two together, we would get this element here. So we can't have that being a subgroup either. And then finally, if we wanted to have it just contain this and this element with the identity element, again, when we add these two together, it would give us this element. So it wouldn't be closed. So we actually can't have a subgroup that contains only three elements.
So we've actually found all the possible subgroups we could have for this group with these five subgroups here. Now let's go ahead and write a diagram for this like we did on the last example. So of course on top we have our original group. Now if we look at these three, none of these are subgroups of one another. So none of these groups with addition is entirely contained in any other of these three groups. So we can't just have a straight diagram like we had before. So we're going to show that this original group has three different subgroups and none of them are subgroups of one another. So on the left here we'll have our first subgroup we looked at, then we can put the next one in the middle, and then finally on the right we have the last subgroup containing two elements. Now each of these subgroups has the trivial group as a subgroup. So we can draw lines like this to show that each of these has the subgroup containing the zero element. This is how our subgroup diagram would look like. And that's going to be all for this video, so thanks for watching.